Why a birth control pamphlet? Where did this come from? And where it came from was, um, you know, Bradlaugh had a, a publishing house. He had the printing press. Annie was an editor there and worked with him there. They had a, a, a bookseller of theirs or someone selling their newspaper in Bristol. And this man, James Cook, was arrested because under the counter, he was also selling uh, Dr. Charles Knowlton's Fruits of Philosophy. And up until this point, from 1832 to late 1876, no one in Britain much cared about this, you know, birth control pamphlet. It was selling on average about 700 copies a year. And Cook was arrested um, under the Obscene Publications Act of 1857. And Annie and Charles told Cook, like, you need to fight this. And initially he said he was going to fight it. And then he got very, very scared because he was threatened with prison time. And so he's entered in at the Old Bailey of pleading guilty to this alongside the murderers and and thieves that were tried that day. And he got off with a 25 pound fine, which was exorbitant because the average laborer's wage was about a pound a week back then. You could buy a house in Notting Hill for like 75 pounds. Um, and Annie was incensed. He felt She felt like this isn't a fight we should back down from. And she said to uh, the men who were with her at the National Secular Society, like, I want to print this pamphlet. I want to fight this fight. And they weren't so into it, to be honest. And they felt there was no way they could win. They were going to get jail time. And for Annie, it was going to mean a lot worse than that. It was probably going to mean she would lose custody of her daughter. But, you know, it, for her, this was her real cause or her moment that she had dreamed of since she was a little kid about, you know, becoming a martyr. And for her, this was the hill she was ready to fight on. It came to the attention of the police because Annie told them they were selling it. She wanted this to be a test case very much. She wanted the platform that an arrest and a, and a trial would bring. So she um, put a notice in the National Reformer newspaper that on March you know, 28th, on this day, I will be here, we'll be selling this. Uh, they had a print run. The first print one was 5,000 copies and it sold out within three days. So by the time the police did show up, there was nothing left for them to seize because it had all been sold. And, you know, the first day the police didn't come and Annie was really incensed. And the second day they didn't come. And so finally she walked over to the police station. <laughs> their, their printing office was right near the old Bailey, actually, um, off of Fleet Street. Um, and she actually brought a copy to the police station and said, you know, we're selling this. And finally, on the third morning, there were two detectives there waiting for her when she opened the shop. Um, there was nothing to seize, but they arrested her anyway. And the charge was selling an obscene book, um, you know, akin to pornography. And they were booked and they were brought to uh, the prison at Guildhall. She and Charles were each put in separate cells. It was very cold. It was very dark. She was surprised that she had been searched, bodily searched by a matron. She thought that was excessive. And then they were brought upstairs to appear before a magistrate, purple robe, ermine collar, the whole deal, a room, in a room full of oil paintings of, of men. Um, and, and they were very fortunate in that the, the magistrate agreed that this should go to trial. It would go to a criminal trial. Um, because if he had just fined them at that moment and released them, it would have all been over for her. As a woman, she could not be released on her own recognizance. We were still under coverture laws then. And so Bradlaugh actually had to sign the bond for her to say that she will reappear. Uh, but Annie was thrilled because their, their arraignment made the newspapers.